Ladies and gentlemen, the Newton Nomadic Theater presents Story Slam. In my line of work, uh, I travel a lot. I just used to travel a lot. I still travel, but I used to travel a lot. I used to go to the Middle East all the time. Uh, and I've learned so much from those people. And by the way, uh, the Middle East was a wonderful place when I was there. Uh, and we just had some, some great times. But the, uh, the first story we had tonight, the gentleman sorry, I can't remember your name, spoke about his negotiating with a certain person uh, for his, in his business. And uh, negotiation uh, is something which I consider myself fairly good at. Uh, and I learned from the best. I learned from absolutely the best. And so negotiation is something that we all do uh, I don't think anybody here in this room, maybe some would, you wouldn't think of going into a grocery store and negotiating over the cost of a loaf of bread. But uh, you got to try it sometime. It's kind of fun. <laughs> the, uh, but the story I want to relate tonight is, and I have several, but this particular one, when we first went, when I first went to Persia with my dad uh, in 1959, I was a young guy, I was a 17-year-old high school kid, and probably the last thing I wanted to do at that time, being a very normal American teenage boy, was probably not to go to Iran. But uh, he talked me into it, and so we went, and uh, it was fabulous. And so when we finally got to Iran, uh, we decided to he, he hadn't been back in Persia since he left. Now, he left Persia as a refugee in 1917 or so. And uh, that's another whole story. That's for another night. It's a wonderful story. And uh, so but he was very eager to kind of see everything. We had gone to see his mother. She was still alive. Before we left, she was in the hospital. She was moving on, and, uh, and he told her that he was taking me back to Iran. And she cried and she shrieked and said, you can't do that, don't do that. Because all she could remember was what it was like when they left, how terrible things were. And uh, so she thought that was a pretty bad idea. But anyway, times had changed, things were better. They uh, changed again, but they, they were better then. And when we got there, we, we rented a car uh, and a driver, and we had this uh, uh, Islamic driver, Ali. He was quite a character. And we decided to just, my dad had an idea of where he wanted to go, and so we went across the country. Now, you got to remember, in those days, there were no roads, really. I mean, there were car paths, the word. It was really very, very, uh, very, very hard to do anything. And so we were, we were, we went to, we were out there driving and one night uh, we were trying to get to a certain village and the car started acting up and it was starting to get dark. And the car was, I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but it, the car was not, not uh, being agreeable. So we decided that we had to find some place to sleep. And we were driving along and we came around a corner and we saw off in the distance the lights of this village. So we headed for the village. We, we, we drove into the village. The village had electricity, which meant they had a generator. And they had strung around light bulbs, bare light bulbs, it looked like a, like a circus. And, uh, but they love that. They love the color and the light and the intensity. And, and uh, it was, it was a party. They were having a great time. Well, we went to the end of the village and we didn't know what exactly to do. And Ali, the driver, was a little scared. He was, didn't know quite what to do. 
So we decided to find something. So we went to the police station. And we got to the police station, and the police said, well, there's really there's no place to stay. I mean, there's nothing here where you can stay. And, uh, oh, Ali was, oh, he's, you know, he went on, he had this great story about how these, he had these American, uh, American uh, dignitaries here, he was driving them, and they had to find a place for him to do something. And so finally the police decided that, well, the only thing you can do is to sleep here in the courtyard. They had a courtyard inside the police station. And so we drove into the, to the courtyard and the courtyard was just, it was just nothing. It was just a, a barren area with walls around it. And they went, they, they brought out, they dragged out some cots that they had and, uh, and they didn't have enough cots. They didn't have much of anything. So <clears throat> My father decided that he would sleep on one of those cots, and I decided that I'll sleep in the car, and Ali decided he'd sleep in the car, in the front seat. So <clears throat> we all got ready to, you know, to do what we had to do, and I, my eyes were wide open. I mean, I had never seen anything like this. Talk about culture shock. And this was just unbelievable. And I'm glad my mother wasn't there. So... Uh, <laughs> And so I'm sure my father was glad she wasn't here. So, <laughs> so uh, we, uh, they, in a few seconds as we were getting ready, these, these men came out with machine guns. And it wasn't St. Valentine's Day, but they came out with these machine guns and they all ringed around us with these, with these machine guns. They were our guards. They were going to guard us over the, through the night. And I thought that was pretty spectacular. And so we, we uh, did what we had to do. And there was a little pool of water in the, in, the, in the area there where we could kind of wash our faces and hands or whatever. It was freezing cold. And <clears throat> now, by the way, this is freezing cold, but this is July. And it was, it's a, a daytime temperature of probably 100 and or 120. And, uh, but yet the, the water, because the water was constantly moving, was very cold, which I thought was kind of interesting. And so we washed up and got ready for bed and went to bed and tried to, you know, do the best we could. And about uh, two o'clock in the morning, maybe, I woke up and, <clears throat> and I, I looked out, I looked over at where my dad was and uh, I saw that he'd kind of kicked the blanket off or something. So I decided I'd go over there and I'd, you know, fix the blanket off uh, for him. And I looked at all these policemen with all the machine guns. They were all sound asleep. <laughs> <laughs> they got these guns on them, and they, but they're all sound asleep. And they didn't even wake up when I got up and I walked around. <laughs> so anyway, we slept there and had a nice... We did the best we could, got up in the morning. Now, another thing that I did was, I had an American passport, and my passport, I kept it right here in this pocket, with facing out, so everybody could see that I was American. So I went to the pool of water where it was, where it was uh, I could wash my face, and I kind of leaned over the pool, and I felt the passport kind of slipping out of my pocket. I, I grabbed it. Thank God, because if I'd lost that passport, I'd probably still be there. <laughs> and um, another reason for the passport was that it was very important to, that they understood that I was an American. My father, who was born in, in Persia, even though he was a naturalized American citizen and had an American passport, he was still considered that he was Persian, that he was a, an Iranian. So that what they could do was, could do, and have done, is decide that, well, I, I really, because, I'm, because I was considered the same, because I was his son, maybe I should spend a couple of years in the military. And uh, that didn't, I didn't really know that, but uh, now, that I knew, now that I know about it, I thought, gee, that's kind of nice that I didn't have to do that. <laughs> and, and so anyway, we spent the night there, 
And I mean, just getting to the to the village was such an experience. So next morning came. Now the car still was inoperable or semi-operable. So uh, Ali got out there, and he, I mean, I don't think he had any idea what he was doing, but he went through the motions, opened the trunk, looked under the car, banged on this and punched on that. He must have hit the right thing because it suddenly started working again. And uh, so anyway, I thought that was pretty amazing. And uh, so we all piled back in the car and we took off again. Now, we hadn't eaten anything. We wanted some breakfast. We wanted to have to eat something. So we came up to this village, this little village not too far away, where there was things growing in the field, and there was a guy out on the, on the road, and he saw us coming, he came out to the road, and he had a handful of cucumbers. Now, he had this, this handful of cucumbers, and he said there were, I don't know, a dozen cucumbers or whatever it was, and he wanted whatever he wanted for him. So we, we bought them. And when my dad started to open it up, the cucumbers, all around the outside, there were like three or four larger cucumbers. And all the ones in the middle were like pencils. <laughs> and uh, that's something that, uh, it's, it's interesting because business in the Middle East is such that it's, it's a, it's a game of mental gymnastics all the time. You always have to be on your guard. And under, you have to understand what it is that's going on. It, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. It's fun. And you have, to, you, you have to keep a sense of humor when you're doing all this. Even though you're screaming at each other, you still have to have a sense of humor. So anyway, we uh, ate our cucumbers and had some water. And we took off again. And we went on... <clears throat> We came to another another village. We'd been driven for quite a while. Came to another village in, uh, into a, uh, a town. Oh, by the way, the name of the area where we were, where we spent the night, the name of it was Davandara. Devandara means Devil's Corner, which I thought was a great place to spend a holiday. <laughs> So we went on to the next village, uh, as I said later, and there was a, this, <clears throat> the name of the village was Mahabad, and there was a, an American uh, uh, organization that was there, and they had a compound and so forth. And uh, this was during, you know, this was at a time when the United States was... <clears throat> you know, helping, trying to help with agricultural products, agricultural information. And uh, they had a, they had a, fro a program there, a point four they called it. And this was, they had this uh, compound. So we went into this compound and, uh, but this was in, it was, this was in Kurdistan. This was in Kurdistan. Oh, beep, beep. This was in Kurdistan. And anyway, we had a great time. I, I'll tell you next time, because I want to come to one of these again. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. I get, I can't, I can't not do it. <laughs> well, that's the uh, end of our program tonight, and uh, if we could, can we get all the storytellers? Come on up here, all the storytellers. There you go. And you know, we're going to be doing this again. So every one of you can come up here. You know, come, you know, come on, take a walk. Look at the lights in your face, the microphone. Come on, check it out. And come back next time and, uh, and do it. Yeah. Do it. Uh, <laughs>